My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. Welcome back to CBS News, continuing coverage of the indictment of Donald J. Trump. This is America Decides, and that was special counsel Jack Smith, who, of course, is overseeing the federal cases against former President Trump. Let's now bring in our CBS News legal analyst, Ricky Kleeman, who's in New York. Ricky, uh, he was referred to repeatedly in court as the former president, not as Mr. Trump, not as the defendant. He was allowed to keep his passport. He's got unfettered access to the world with no travel restrictions. They're working out apparently a plan for who exactly he can speak to on a regular basis regarding the case and other matters. And we still don't know when exactly this is going to reconvene or proceed. What do you make of how it all played out today in Miami? I think that we have to remember that arraignments are really pretty perfunctory. The purpose of an arraignment is to apprise the defendant of the charges and for him to enter a not guilty plea, which was done by his attorney. In terms of having restrictions in terms of his travel or surrendering his passport, I didn't expect any of that to occur in any event. He's campaigning to become the next president of the United States. Addressing him as former President Trump versus Mr. Trump versus the defendant, you can never tell what a judge can do. And obviously, this magistrate decided to show him respect. And he's entitled to respect. We have to remember that he is presumed innocent at this point and up and until any point where a jury might convict him. But I do want to talk, Ed, about that condition having to do with witnesses. Yeah. Um, I think that there are two things here. Number one is many of these people who may be witnesses may be his employees. So he may have to deal with them on a regular basis, but they're not necessarily people who are close to him. So, of course, he's going to be able to talk to them, but he's being told he should not talk to them about the case. I don't have any problems with that, and that's not necessarily unusual. The problem, which I know if I were representing him, and I expect that his lawyers who are representing him will have to consider, as well as whoever is the local counsel and Mr. Nauta's current counsel, have to consider, is to bring a motion about the order that says that Mr. Nauta and Donald Trump cannot speak about the case. It is traditional, it has been approved that joint defendants can have a joint defense agreement. These two defendants are charged as co-conspirators. Their lawyers must communicate with each other. Their lawyers need to exchange information and see how they are going to go after the government's case together. It is unrealistic for their lawyers not to be able to talk. And now we look to the order going to Donald Trump and right. to the defendant, Mr. Nauda. This is his valet, for heaven's sake. They are together all the time. He was his body man when, uh, he, when Donald Trump was president. That's about as close as any two people can be. The idea, the, they, it just seems to me, Ed, that the lawyers are going to appeal that ruling and that these two defendants will ask to be able to talk about the case. And those kinds of motions are the kind that could slow down Jack Smith's public vow for a speedy trial, right? I mean, yes. this is the way it can be delayed, is by throwing all these motions out there, drag it out beyond the 24 election, or just drag it out as long as necessary in hopes that the prosecution buckle. Well, yes and no. Yes, they will create a delay, but we also have to remember that that's a very legitimate motion, as will be their motions to dismiss. It's not that we should think that they are filing a motion to dismiss or a motion to exclude the testimony of Donald Trump's prior lawyer, uh, where they, the judge broke the crime fraud exception and allowed that lawyer's testimony to go before the grand jury. That's a very viable motion. So there's one thing to think that lawyers might do things to have frivolous delays, these are not frivolous motions. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, uh, I wanted our, our viewers to hear from a woman named Alina Haba, who is the former president's attorney and spokeswoman. She spoke earlier today with our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge, a bit about the potential legal strategy. Take a look, and then we'll talk about it. 
How does the Trump legal team plan to fight these charges? Well, that's privileged. And obviously our, our fight is our fight and it'll come out you know, in light soon. I think the American people need to remember one thing though. An indictment reads like a story, which is not typical for an indictment like this, because they want to tell the story. We saw special prosecutor Jack Smith stand up and say that every American person should read this and, and spend the time reading it. Well, of course you want that. Number one, you'll taint a jury pool. Number two, it's the story you wanted for election interference. And um, we haven't told our side of the story yet and everything has context and everything you know, has to be told both sides. And, and we're looking forward to doing that. She seems to signal, Ricky, that there could be holes in the indictment. Do you see any that they might be able to exploit? No. Um, I, I think, frankly, that the indictment is solid. That doesn't mean that they won't try with appropriate motions, as I say, to exclude Evan Corcoran's, his prior lawyer's testimony, and it doesn't mean that they won't attack the indictment itself. I do differ with uh, Alina Haba on one thing. This is a speaking indictment. It's a federal court. This is not unusual to have a long narrative. Uh, I've seen it countless times during my practice and dur during my work as a legal analyst. The federal government can do this, and it's what they do often very well. So I, I do differ with her about that. We well, know yeah. this case will be fought on motions to dismiss, not on the facts. Yeah, and, and this reporter can add, in, in what little legal work he's done compared to you, that yes, the federal government often writes well-written indictments just like this in all kinds of cases. It is not unique. Uh, what is unique, however, is the case and all of it that comes with it around the former president. Ricky, we're glad you're here for the legal analysis. Great to be with you. All right, we'll talk soon.